Good afternoon. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals and ConsierBullion.com in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. It's about noon time here. Figured I'd wait a little bit and doing today's report, let the dust settle after today's total trashing of probably every market across the board uh, by uh, Fed speak, Fed, uh, Fed bullshit, you know, uh, the typical stuff. Uh, as far as gold and silver prices, we're going to get to that in a moment. But take a look at this. I mean, it's Saturday. It's noon time. This is typically uh, Florida's busiest time of year for European tourists and Canadian tourists and such. Um, look how quiet it is. Again, Broward County, folks, Lauderdale by the Sea, a beach destination. Look at the number of people on the beach uh, right now. And again, it's not our it's not our typical tourist season here right now. Uh, again, this is a live camera here of uh, the beach in uh, my lovely little town here. And uh, just quiet, just quiet. And there's a whole bunch of hotels along this beach in uh, LBTS and all up and along, all along the Florida coast um, that uh, seem really quiet out there as well. So the European tourists aren't here. That's kind of a sign of things to come here as far as, uh, 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 well, I guess, the uh, the economy goes, especially in Europe. Again, no Canadians, no Europeans out here. I think one of my commenters, uh, Canadian commenters, mentioned that uh, they went to California, where they typically, you know, pay a little bit less than they do in Canada. Uh, they said they ended up paying more, and the trip was uh, uh, so <laughs> they won't be traveling here for a little while. And again, take a look at the beach; it's just absolutely dead. But what do you expect? Um, uh, from a strong dollar. And no, I don't mean a strong dollar based on, we've talked about this many times, where's the, uh, uh, oh gosh, let me see here, view, where's my view, show uh, favorite bars, let me show my favorite bar up here, and uh, squeeze down here, what a lovely day out though, 86 degrees, about uh, 4 or 5 degrees cooler than it typically is this time of day, I think uh, our weather starting to cool down here, as you South Florida peeps know. Uh, as we get into the September months, it gets uh, from hot to warmer, <laughs> or to hot to warm. Okay, uh, so uh, that's where we're at right now. But man, it is just freaking quiet out here. I hear it's the same all over the country. Uh, let's see what our well, our tour seasons are always good here in South Florida because we get all the snowbirds from blue states and from the northern states. Uh, uh, what we call snowbirds, people that live up north in the summertime and live in Florida in the south, in the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in the wintertime. Uh, and uh, our snowbirds will start showing up here right after Thanksgiving. Let's see how busy it is down here. But I, I'm sure a lot of snowbirds have money. They have discretionary income. Well, that may have changed. Let's see. I'm kind of curious what our season will look like here in Florida overall as well. Uh, let's take a look at, I, I kind of I kind of went sideways there about our season, about our beaches. We're talking about the Fed here. And <laughs> what else? Uh, well, the Fed, man, they're between a rock and a hard place, aren't they? Uh, well, I'm going to talk about that later this week. I'm going to talk about the Fed a little bit today, but you know, I'm going to get into what Ted Butler talked about this week, uh, and uh, talk, you know, talk about these rigged markets that we're seeing gold and silver. A lot of people are mistakenly thinking that a strong dollar is the reason that gold and silver are down. They are somewhat, somewhat. But not the fact that the dollar is strong, not the fact the dollar buys more. That's just a rigged bullshit narrative, okay? The dollar is really just uh, only stronger against a basket of other fiat turds out there, like the Canadian dollar, like the uh, 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 European uh, or the euro. And again, good reason why we're not seeing European and Canadian tourists, because the dollar is so strong versus their currencies that it just doesn't pay for them to come here. I mean, they're going to pay a fortune to come here. Uh, but uh, well, I'm going to talk about rigged markets, and a lot of, again, a lot of folks, are, uh, a lot of folks out there are going to uh, repeat the uh, mainstream uh, corporate talking head narrative that yeah, as uh, real rates or as rates increase, uh, that'll put downward pressure on the price of gold and silver, and uh, that may have been true at one point, uh, many, many, many years ago. Uh, when uh, treasury rates and CD rates started to become, and, the, and we, I saw that happen, uh, what was it, 1980, uh, after the uh, gold market. Uh, he, Volcker started raising the uh, CD rates and treasury rates up substantially, uh, and at, at one point I believe they were paying real rates on that uh, compared to what inflation was, although I don't really know. I think the complete uh, inflation was figured probably more on a fair basis back then. They've changed how they figure inflation so many times that it, it under uh, uh, the inflation estimates that we get, the official uh, estimates, and where are our official estimates? Right here, uh, from the uh, 
uh, economic data from the St. Louis Fed, the U.S. Consumer Price Index, uh, purchasing power for uh, power of the consumer dollar in the U.S. city, uh, and there we go. You've got strength in the dollar as far as uh, uh, purchasing power. Uh, however, take a look at when the strength occurs. It occurs when the Fed does great interventions uh, in one form, whether it's tightening or whether it's loosening. Uh, and what you've got here is you've got an increase, a big increase, upon loosening during the uh, Critter 19 period right there. Uh, during that period when uh, all the idiots uh, closed down every business and everything out there and caused even more problems. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> uh, that you got an increase in there. That's from uh, QE. That's from uh, 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 loosening, actually, and, and, and putting more money out there and stimulus and all that stuff. What we're kind of seeing right here in the increase of the U.S. or the increase of the dollar uh, or the buying power of the dollar is uh, tightening uh, less dollars out there uh, comparatively speaking to other countries and again that's the basket of turds I talk about that the uh, the DXY do I even have the DXY up here uh, the dollar index is compared to I don't think so let's take a look well there you are the Fed is in a place right there damned if they do and damned if they don't they have to raise rates right now and a lot of people say well why do they have to raise rates uh, they have to raise them to some point because if they raise rates too high uh, the federal government will not be able to pay its debt and uh, that would be uh, I don't know what that means uh, when a country becomes a uh, triple-a I'm not even sure if the US uh, <laughs> is triple-a or double-a but uh, our, our debt has always been top-notch as far as if you got it had to own debt is backed by dollars and such uh, but uh, uh, at some point if the Fed keeps uh, uh, tightening and keeps raising rates I think they're only going to go so far and it'll never be into the tune of real positive rates maybe bullshit positive rates based on their uh, underestimated uh, uh, inflation uh, uh, numbers that they use you know they're talking about what inflation to eight nine percent or something like that in fact in reality if they based it on the old way we used to do the inflation rates we're probably at 12 15 percent so damned if they do and damned if they don't but the problem with low interest rates for the Fed is that lowering interest rates loosening kind of stimulates the economy out there and they know that and the problem they have is is that once you get near zero rates uh, what, where can you go? You go to sub-zero rates, and how far sub-zero rates can you go? I mean, the Europe, some European banks uh, actually went into sub-zero rates, I believe, uh, and uh, it's not good. It's, it's really bad, actually, and it's bad for the country, it's bad for the currency. Uh, so the U.S. dollar being the world-leading currency, you know, the last uh, horse to the uh, uh, glue factory uh, in the, uh, tia, uh, the fiat turd basket, um, you know the U.S. dollar is the top dog out there, so they've got to. They can't go sub-zero, uh, and and they had no other choice than to raise rates. I mean, this was all. Uh, you didn't have to be a fortune teller or a genius to figure out that the Fed had to raise rates. And the only reason they had to raise rates again, because where were they going at these low rates, sub-zero? They just couldn't do it. So they had to reload the six shooter. The six shooter was out of. This just figure. Uh, 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 one e e each uh, 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 cylinder in that chamber. If you if you all know what a six shooter is, uh, each one of them is a one point, uh, you know, or a, a one bullet point or whatever the fuck it is. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked here with some traffic out front walking by. Sorry about that. Uh, so figure each one of those bullets is a uh, is a one bullet point. You know, one percent. All right. So you got six percent there. Uh, the Fed basically essentially got down to that 1% level and was getting close to that zero level uh, as far as uh, uh, low interest rates. And uh, again, they couldn't go sub-zero, so they have to reload the gun. Maybe we'll go up to 6% or whatever it is. But remember, the cost of living is far above 6%. They're claiming 8 or 9%, maybe 10 I'm not quite sure. But in reality, it's probably like 13 14 15%. Uh, so... Uh, uh, that kind of blows away the narrative that uh, the, the only way that a smart person would get out of gold and silver or not consider gold and silver or other assets and get into treasuries and get into bonds and things like that is if there was indeed a real rate. There is not, folks. There is not a real rate. That's the narrative. That's the bullshit. And again, you know, if, the, if treasuries and, and those kind of instruments were paying far above what the inflation really is 
I put my money there. It's a safe. Uh, you'd think it'd be a safe place to put money. You'd be making more than the uh, 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 what inflation is happening. You'd at least stay par. But the, the truth is that's not happening at all. And again, the only reason the Fed's raising rates right now is because uh, they're going to have to lower them again. They just need more bullets in that fight. All right, let's take a look at the uh, trashing that uh, gold and silver and platinum got yesterday. 1644, 1890, 1857, 90. Folks, this is a gift. This is a gift for people that haven't bought. Uh, this is a gift for uh, 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 people considering buying gold, silver, and platinum. Yeah, I mean, it's like buying cheap gasoline and buying like cheap uh, steak and cheap whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it's a fire sale as far as prices go, and we'll get into that why in a moment and how these markets are manipulated. I'm going to talk about uh, Ted Butler's recent newsletter, uh, a couple quotes out of there that I don't think he'd mind us giving up, and uh, a recent letter that he wrote to, uh, I think it was BlackRock as well, that, ex that talks about the SLV. Uh, so uh, let's take a look at the highs and lows here. I'm not even going to look at the charts in the Crooked Crimex and uh, uh, Globex markets. Um, why? Why bother? Um, <laughs> that's how I feel right now, actually. Uh, so uh, let's take a look. A low of 1642 in gold, a high of 1657. And interestingly enough, I got my video up from the other night, and the page is up there. Look at that, 1671 on Thursday night, uh, and uh, we, we ended up back down to uh, 1645. Wow, uh, that's quite a kick in the ass there. And and it it has to do nothing with. Uh, uh, higher interest rates. It has nothing to do with real rates. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, gold. Uh, people just not interested in buying gold anymore. It has everything to do with a crooked price discovery in the Crimex, Comex markets and the LBMA markets where the price discovery for gold, silver, and platinum is made. Um, a friend of mine asked me to explain this to him, and then let me think, well, how did I explain this to my friend Nick? Actually, he's my, the trainer, my trainer that I go see a couple times a week. Uh, Nick was asking me how these are markets are manipulated, and hang on a second, what was, what was uh, I kind of was telling Nick that, gee, uh, oh, I kind of, I forgot the story. I had a simple explanation for this, and uh, it could only happen to me when I'm trying to explain to someone uh, on my video here live, semi-live. All right, let me move along from here. Sorry about that, folks. If it comes up to me, and I'm sure I'll think about it later, I'll tell you about it. Uh, it sucks getting old. 1880, uh, the low on silver, 1922. Let's see, did it get lower than that? No, it really didn't. Uh, so the low that we saw on Friday was 1880, but where were we, where were we on, uh, uh, let's see here, on uh, Thursday night when I did my last video? We were 1966. Holy shit, a high in 1988. That was just like a fucking dollar smackdown, folks. And again, silver is the most crooked market. But the COMEX markets are the most crooked markets out there when it comes to silver. Absolutely crooked. This has nothing to do with supply and demand factors. And again, I want to read what Ted Butler says uh, here about uh, uh, silver and gold markets and the manipulation that I think will calm your nerves and make you feel better, as it does mine reading his uh, uh, commentary on precious metals. Uh, it helps you understand the game much better. Again, going back to what I s talked about here, of course, the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't play, you can't win. And uh, Ted Butler under uh, explains to us how the game is rigged uh, and how you can play the game and win. And it is really all about buying these dips, especially when it talks you know, when we talk about gold, silver, and platinum. Uh, the overall trend. Imagine gold and silver over the last 40 years, manipulated, not manipulated, as a roller coaster. Okay, uh, to the moon, basically a roller coaster upward. We'll follow my little bouncing hand right here. There's uh, the price of gold and silver over the long term, over the period of our lifetime. All right. Um, and, uh, you know, when you get the opportunity, especially in these rig markets, to buy these dips, you know, again, provides a great opportunity to buy real metal at much lower prices. It's bargain basement prices. Jeez, uh, I wish I had a lot more money than I do right now. I'd kind of back up the truck at these prices. Uh, and will they hit a little bit lower? Very possibly. Never underestimate these uh, uh, criminals. Quote of the week and a sip of coffee here. Give me one sec. Hmm. Quotes, I should say, quote, <laughs> I should say, quotes, I should say, uh, from uh, uh, courtesy of uh, Butler Research. I am a, a subscriber of Butler Research, have been for a little while. I'm going to share a few things that he's put out 
Well, his letter is uh, open to uh, everyone on the internet, and in a few, I'm going to give you a few quotes that I don't think he would mind at all, uh, someone else quoting out of his uh, recent newsletter. Uh, first, uh, again, I'd encourage you, if you spend a lot of money in silver, or if you happen to be another uh, a YouTube silver coin kind of talking head like myself, or uh, just a dealer out there listening to me, uh, I really recommend highly that you subscribe to Butler Research here. It's 30 something dollars per month and worth every penny of it. Uh, let me get into uh, some of the uh, quotes here. Uh, first, uh, uh, this is a letter that Ted Butler wrote, uh, I believe it's to uh, uh, BlackRock if I'm correct, uh, some time ago, oh I took out the date when that was written, it wasn't too long ago. Uh, but dear sir, and this is Ted Butler to BlackRock or the people that run BlackRock or the CEO. I'm contacting you to lodge a complaint against BlackRock Inc. for failing to uphold its fiduciary responsibilities both to shareholders of its iShare Silver Trust SLV and its own shares BLK. Uh, BLK. Uh, the matter involves manipulative, manipulative and fraudulent short selling in shares of SLV. An issue which I have raised with senior management in the past to no avail. BlackRock is sponsoring of uh, the BlackRock is the sponsor of SLV. SLV is particularly unique security in which shareholders are led to believe that each share is backed by a specific quantity of uh, physical silver. Give me one second here, I guess I can't do that. Uh, of uh, physical silver. One ounce of silver for every share, minus the accumulated management fee since the trust introduction in 2006. Uh, the problem with the short selling of shares, even if borrowed and not sold naked short, is that, and again, a lot of people believe that there's a lot of naked short selling involved with SLV, but I won't get into that. Let me continue this letter. Is that the shorted sales, uh, the shorted shares are actually phantom shares in which share owners are deprived of metal backing as set out in the prospectus. What prompts my renewed complaint at this time is a recent and rather shocking, and again, this is recently, folks, as you can see here, July 29, 2022, uh, is, uh, Complaint at this time is a recent, rather shocking increase in the short position of SLV, as of the most reporting date of uh, uh, the most recent reporting date of July 29, 2022, in which the short positions grew to 47.5 million shares, or 9 percent. Now that's a huge uh, growth in short positions, or nine. And this is about time when silver really started getting rocked as well to the downside or 9% of total shares outstanding. This means that roughly one out of every 10 shares outstanding has no physical silver backing. Otherwise kind of known, maybe I'm wrong calling it this, but as a, a, uh, a naked short uh, or a naked position where there's nothing backing that but just a piece of paper. Uh, and SLV, I always thought SLV was one of those, uh, you know, run by BlackRock. You figured that they would do everything on the up and up. But again, let me continue uh, Ted's letter here, which uh, goes into, oh, gosh, I, well, I guess I can. I was going to try to highlight that, but let me not mess with this. I'll <laughs> I knew it. There we go. All right. I knew I'd screw that up. Uh, okay. And uh, let me see here. Compounding the problem is that February 2021, at the height of the intense retail investor uh, interest, in SLV and silver in general, a whole set of new risk factors were issued in a prospectus amendment. Uh, a lot of people talked about this, not a lot, a few people talked about this, particularly Ted Butler, uh, uh, not too long ago, or, you know, again, back in uh, 2021, in which important new risk factors were laid out, including an admission that there may not be sufficient physical silver available to conduct business as usual. It sounds like that BlackRock was becoming aware that uh, they had these naked positions here, one out of every 10 SLV share, not having uh, any silver behind it. Uh, so again, they changed prospectus. Uh, I think that's pretty sleazy if you ask me. I'm, I'm sure they did it just to limit their uh, liability in case that whole market blows up in, in, in their faces, which it could, but here, I, I digress. Let me move on to what Ted says here. Included in those new risk factors was a specific warning to short sellers to be advised that short selling in SLV may be particularly risky. Ooh, they added in that it's going to be even riskier. Well, that's interesting. Uh, wow. Uh, at the time of the prospectus revision, the short position in SLV was 17 million shares or 2.8% of the total shares outstanding. Uh, the most recent position in SLB is now close to three times larger than that. Three times larger, three times 17 million folks. Uh, what is 57 uh, million shares? 
uh, or close to uh, uh, eight over eight percent of the total shares outstanding. Wow. Um, and again, I'll keep reading here. And total shares shorted and more than three times larger in terms of uh, uh, percentage of total shares outstanding. So obviously, BlackRock is ignoring its own prospectus amendments issued in February 2021. Not only are they unbacked shares created by excessive short selling of real concern to shareholders of SLV, uh, and Ted admits that his wife holds in a retirement account SLV, uh, which I find unusual, uh, but shareholders of BlackRock itself are being cheated due to the phantom shares created by the excessive short selling and not paying the annual management fees on shares not officially issued, thus depriving shareholders uh, of uh, BlackRock, an important source of income. Mr. Butler kind of reminds uh, the BlackRock person that he's talking to that, that not only are they screwing SLV customers, people that own SLV, uh, but they're also screwing themselves out of some potential money they could make. Uh, but I don't know where that's going to go, but uh, uh, interesting kind of uh, uh, thing. If you're going to write someone, you might as well remind them that they're losing money as well, not to mention credibility and the potential of that market just to blow up in their faces uh, like it did with the nickel market in the LME market, um, the nickel and LME market uh, some time ago. Oh, was it August or something? I forget. Uh, the most plausible explanation for large increase, 50%. Over the month, uh, over the past month, in SOV shares shorted is that the short sellers didn't wish to abide by the prospectus to deposit silver for new created shares to avoid upward price pressure in the physical silver market. Clearly, a manipulative and fraudulent ploy. Uh, and again, I believe Ted Butler nailed that. There's big issues with SLV. Uh, Ted Butler points this out that uh, uh, at least one out of uh, 10 of the SLV shares issued is not backed by any silver. Uh, could it be worse than that? Uh, and it also, the, the reason that SLV is being shorted is nothing more than manipulated manipulation and fraudulent ploy uh, uh, to not drive the price of silver up while draining uh, a lot of silver off the market and keeping it off the market, okay? Well, pff, folks, it, it, you couldn't write this stuff, and it just amazes me that the uh, um, uh, governmental agents, it doesn't amaze me, the government agencies, if they admitted that the gold and silver markets were manipulated, uh, they'd probably have to admit that other uh, 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 markets were manipulated. That would just snowball into a giant avalanche. Uh, and take them down with it. The CFTC could never admit that the gold and silver price has been manipulated uh, for the last 40 years because then they'd have to ad admit that they were either complicit with it and or stupid. Uh, and I believe a little bit of both, if you ask me. Uh, and right now, complicit because, again, if they were to go in, if the CFTC was to go into the COMEX markets and uh, suddenly start saying, yeah, this is manipulated, fraudulent behavior, we're going to fine you and call you out on this, uh, then they'd have to answer to the press and answer to a lot of people, why now? Why didn't they do it 40 years ago? And they do not want to do that because, again, it implies that the CFTC is either complicit and or stupid. And as I said, I believe it's a little bit of both. Uh, Ted Butler's quotes of the week, folks, uh, quotes of the week that I don't think he'd mind me sharing. And by the way, uh, definitely check out uh, his stuff online. He does a lot of, uh, uh, he's got a free archive here, which if you're not going to subscribe, I highly recommend you check out Ted Butler's free archive. And again, I don't get a free subscription. I don't get anything uh, from telling you this. I just, uh, am, you know, I just uh, uh, think he has great data and he has great insight into these markets. And that's why I share it with you. Uh, and uh, his recent quotes here, uh, should be very calming to a lot of you folks. And I want to, again, what did I say at the beginning? Of course the game is rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. And you know how it's, it's rigged. It's rigged through the, uh, 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 the big commercial short positions, which have backed out. They're at the, the least amount of uh, uh, commercial shorts right now than there has been in many years, my understanding is. Uh, so perhaps we've seen the end of that manipulation in that market. Maybe all the big commercials are waiting in the long positions, waiting for silver to go up. Meanwhile, uh, the reason that the price of silver is getting monkey hammer now is probably because of SLV and this big short position of SLV as well. Uh, but let's take a look at why you don't need to worry about this. Ted Butler says this week, the overriding conclusions from the facts I have laid out is that something is wrong with this picture and what is most wrong is the price of silver and gold continue to remain at current depressed, depressed levels. Yes, in more ways than one, 
Uh, more ways than not, I'm sorry. The price of silver has been wrong for decades, but never more wrong than currently. And again, this is a gentleman that's been in this uh, industry since the 1970s, I believe, and understands it very well. Uh, Ted Butler says, I understand perhaps better than anyone, and I believe he does, uh, the frustration and sense of hopelessness that comes with a price manipulated lower for decades. Despite overwhelming signs, the manipulation can't continue, but does. Uh, and I get that too. I get there is a lot of frustration out there with a, a lot of folks out here. And this is why I did this video particularly. Uh, any continuation of silver's wrong and too low prices is an insult to everything believed to be true, such as the law of supply and demand and a fair and equitable regulatory structure. No issue could be more important than the price manipulation, and silver is a very big deal. Uh, boy, I did that all in one breath. Hang on a second. Sip of coffee here. Uh, and again, pause this page, read the reread this uh, after I'm done with it, or just pause it and read it, and then you can fast forward so you don't have to hear me reading it. But I highly recommend you read this uh, again, even after me uh, 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 repeating it. One second. Hmm. Although the silver price manipulation has lasted longer than anyone could possibly imagine, it would be a serious mistake to think it can be last forever. Things that can't continue won't continue. Uh, even if we can't pinpoint the future date of a can't with precision, uh, much more important is not getting sucked into the morass of daily gloom based upon the collusive Comex commercials' latest dirty tricks. And uh, Ted Butler's exactly right about there, that no matter how you look at it, the long-term trend for gold and silver because of a fiat-based uh, world uh, is upward. It's a roller coaster ride to the moon, especially since the uh, uh, with this manipulation we've had for going on so so long. That's where the uh, real roller coaster ride comes in. Uh, but again, I digress. Let me move on to what Ted says. Instead, look at the facts over the last six months as I've laid them out, and he has. Uh, again, this is why I recommend that you subscribe to Ted Butler or read as much of his stuff as you can, uh, and uh, you'll uh, you'll know how the game is rigged, and you'll feel much more comfortable about buying more silver or. Uh, keeping the stuff that you have uh, for yourself. If those facts are misstated in any way, uh, facts are facts, and I doubt very much that the facts have been misreported, and I'm not leaving out at least knowingly any other facts that would override the facts that I presented. Uh, Ted's most, in case you're wondering what he's talking about here, it might be a little bit cryptic for you. Ted's most recent newsletter, uh, he points out facts and opinions, and there's a big difference between facts and opinions. You know, you can give uh, a couple different people the same set of facts and you can come up with different opinions all right so ted points out the facts and then he points out what he believes you know what his opinion are uh, on the facts and and his opinions to me are spot on because again he's got the expertise he's been reading these reports for years he's been doing this for decades uh and pointing this stuff out but okay let me finish this up here because i've got a couple more paragraphs here to go um uh, let's face it the facts as i've laid them out can't continue indefinitely as present, present presently in motion. Uh, by far, the fact most likely to change and change uh, soon is price, unless everything ought to be rational and logical has been rendered obsolete. But it's impossible for the law of supply and demand, and again, I'm going to repeat this, it's impossible for the law of supply and demand to render obsolete in the end, despite the remarkable criminal success of the COMEX commercials over the decades. The world can't endure for a long uh, for long a circumstance where ever lower prices increase supply and demand and reduce demand. Try to keep that in mind. And what Ted's saying here, especially in the silver markets, is that uh, uh, this manipulation, this monkey hammering, this uh, collusive behavior in the silver markets, um, um, you know, naked short, shorting in uh, COMEX and SLV has, has so screwed up this market that that we are having serious issues with supplies out there, with supply versus what, you know, so the price discovery is really screwed up. And uh, at, at some point, uh, uh, I look at the COMEX markets as the tail, and I look at uh, the physical silver markets as the dog, and for decades the tail has been wagging the dog, but pretty soon I believe that the physical markets being the dog is going to wag that frickin' tail right off, I'm telling you. All right, so uh, um, let me continue here as well. I'm sorry about that. 
It's possible the world can endure for a long way. Okay. Instead of lamenting the continued man manipulation, this is something I've been talking about too. Instead of lamenting the continued manipulation, welcome, welcome it as presenting the investment opportunity of a lifetime. Something I've been saying for quite some time, folks. This is like cheap gasoline, cheap steak, cheap lobster. Look at it as a, as a gift, you know. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Just take advantage of it while you can. And that's how you're going to beat these players is you're going to buy. Why they're uh, loading up on paper uh, and uh, 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 silver and gold paper that is not worth the uh, 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 paper it's printed on, uh, you're going to be uh, sucking up all that gold and silver that, uh, that, that, that they are not, okay? All right, anyways, uh, oh, boys, uh, let me think here. Where am I? It's a long, I'm reading a lot today. I don't usually read this much. Sorry about that. Every day without fail, and, and this is most important right here, what Ted Butler brings up, and I, I agree with this. Every week without fail, I wake up thinking that today will surely be the day that silver explodes in price. The rest of the day, I then explain to myself that while this was day wasn't the day, it must be soon given all the facts. Most remarkable is the recognition of the infinitely larger number of commenters uh, and investors expecting silver to soar to once scoffed at price levels compared to the near universal number of bullish skeptics decades earlier. You know, years ago when we talked about this manipulation, there was a very few people talking about it. Ted Butler was one of them, uh, but very few people. And we were looked at like, uh, uh, you know, tinfoil hats. But all of a sudden, we've been you know, proven right. All these conspiracies about gold and silver prices being suppressed, uh, the COMEX markets being crooked, the SOB market being crooked. They've all turned out correct, folks, uh, and we're seeing it play out right in front of our very eyes. Uh, and Ted, and, but years ago, there were a lot more skeptics than there were people that believed that uh, this stuff. That tide is starting to turn. There's very few skeptics out there, very few. Uh, and I think uh, there's a lot more people realizing how crooked the COMEX markets are. Uh, but again, let me move along with this. With so many new eyes and minds discovering the great value that silver represents and so few legitimate arguments for why silver shouldn't soar in price, it's impossible for me to visualize how a relative handful of crook traders in the comics can see for much longer and keeping prices in check. Uh, from uh, his lips to your ears, I should say, uh, absolutely have to agree with this. And folks, again, if, you, if, if my reading kind of gets you a little confused, a little bit choppy there, or too fast, I do highly recommend you pause this video and read this right here again. Also, go back and take a look at this one. Pause this and read this. Meanwhile, What's in the news? Russia one step closing to using Bitcoin, uh, crypto, and international trade. Um, I haven't talked about uh, crypt, uh, cryptos or Bitcoin in quite, quite some time, folks, but uh, uh, I find this kind of interesting, and it all has to do with de-dollarization. But meanwhile, what I found interesting is even the, uh, uh, Russia's central bank is opposing this. It's their uh, politicians that want uh, want to uh, use crypto and Bitcoin as a means of trade. The uh, central bank of Russia does not, and I believe if uh, uh, Russia's, Russia's central banks are anything like the central banks of Europe and the United States and other central banks, um, they'll get their way. The, <laughs> the central banks will, not the politicians. So I don't really see this happening, but let me know what you think in the opinion section. I'm going to stay out of the politics today. So much of it, we're all sick of it. We're all tired of talking about this nonsense right here. Um, hmm, interesting. 20, oh, that's an ad, okay. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, wow, boy, that's tough right here. We've been very fortunate in Florida, but, you know, we do got one coming up the pipe, I think. If it hits the uh, uh, Gulf Coast, that uh, that storm that's kind of brewing down, what is it? I don't even know where it's at right now. But uh, if we get a, a storm in the Gulf Coast, you could see gasoline prices go up higher as well uh, because there's a lot of um, gas produced in the uh, Gulf region of the United States. All right, anyways. Gonna get out of here, get into yesterday's video, which was paying too much for silver and gold. And uh, I'm not going to talk about what the best deals are, folks. I do it every day. Uh, I'm going to probably only do it a couple times a week. But uh, if you're not sure what the, unless there's changes, I'm going to kind of cut down on my uh, what are the best deals out there uh, uh, segment that I usually do. 
Uh, nothing's changed. It's the best deals that uh, were for the last two months, three months, are the same best deals right now. And if you're not sure what they are, just take a look at yesterday's video or any number of the videos I've done the last three months. Uh, no sense in just repeating the same old stuff. Uh, but what I will tell you that uh, I like to thank everybody for their comments. I like to thank everybody for subscribing and hitting that like button. Uh, and uh, all the uh, commenters that I get out here, I appreciate every one of you. I read every one of your comments as well. I don't think I can, uh, uh, I think I'm not going to answer comments today. Normally I like to, and uh, oh gosh, I can't help myself sometimes. I am going to start doing some more coin bullion uh, or coin uh, numismatic type uh, videos here in the near future. I keep threatening you guys, but I will do that. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate that. This is Brian Kuzmar with. Uh, commercial rare coins and precious metals. This is our brick and mortar here in South Florida. If you live in South Florida or you're visiting South Florida, come by and see us between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Who am I? Brian Kuzmar, second generation dealer. I've been doing this since 1977. I've been in this location right here uh, since 1995. Uh, and uh, I, I know what I'm doing when it comes to rare coins and precious metals and paper money as well. Uh, we also have an estate business that does other things, but I'm not going to get into that. And if you don't live in South Florida, you can't come by it uh, to see us. And as you know, I advertise to be at Max SD, Bullion, JM, Bullion, Miles, Franklins, and all the big boys out there. So whether you're buying just a tiny bit of silver or a large amount of silver, if you're in South Florida, come by and see us, and we'll beat all their prices, including the locals. Uh, if you don't live in South Florida and you're buying more than 100 ounces of gold and more than 2,500 ounces of silver, I created this uh, little uh, business right here, not business, but a little uh, side thing, uh, where we can do business over the phone using wires and secured methods of shipping uh, and secured methods of uh, just doing everything. Uh, so if you're looking for more than 100 ounces of gold and more than 2,500 ounces of silver and you live anywhere in the continental U.S., give us a call at concierboyan.com. Well, folks, it's the weekend. Uh, I think I'm going to go take a swim. Look at that. That water just looks beautiful. I hope wherever you are, uh, even my peeps that live outside of uh, Florida and my customers outside, well, I don't have customers outside of Florida generally, but <laughs> you folks outside of South Florida, hope you're having a wonderful day as well. Hey, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.